Hi Aries, if you want to come on in, have a seat for some symbolic support. I've got your ink blot here ready and dried. If you want to scry with me, I'm going to do something a little different. I don't know if it's going to stay or go, but I appreciate the space to not only create, uh, but to share my insights. And of course, thank you. You are always encouraged to share your comments and inspire perspective. What are we looking for here? We're looking for Aries. How you do Aries. There we go. Arians. If you want to take a screenshot so you can scry on your own time and terms and see what comes through as you gaze to game for your own insights, I'm going to offer another camera perspective. Uh, so if you want to take a moment, we'll close the eyes, releasing the race and the rush, activating the abstract mind and ancient awareness to perceive and receive symbolic support. And Arians, when you are ready, Arians, you can open your eyes and we'll start to dig into your ink blot. So we have two here actually, a contrast in a color, a psyche, psychic, intellect, intuition, uh, add any polarity you would like. This is just what was inspired for the month of November. And again, we're just gonna empathically explore and see what stands out. All right, Arians, I'm gonna dig in here and I'll add on tarot and oracle shortly. Oh, look at this, like a little, <laughs> um, something is riding. There's a little creature. I don't know if you can see it with me. I'll try and highlight it here. Did it come up? No, kind of, not kind of. There we go. Something is riding, like a, something that's flying. Riding a flying creature, I'm gonna put. If you see something, that symbol. Just rock, flying high, flying high. Definitely the air of flying high, Aries. I don't know if this is like a bird, like a hawk or an eagle or anything along that lines, but it kind of feels like it does like this. Like, da, da, da. like it's very happy, happy. That's how I'm feeling. The feeling of it is happy. Sorry if I shake the camera. Okay, hilarious. I am seeing potatoes. Potatoes. Okay, and when I wander onto this side. Hmm. Okay something about hearing enhancements I wanted to say AIDS like hearing AIDS but then I actually heard the hearing enhancements there's my little ears my scribbly little ears there could be some hearing going on look how far apart those eyes are I don't know how to say that in a I'm just gonna put far apart eyes like there's a big space between between them I feel like that might be somebody you know that just has um, or that might be symbolically meaningful to somebody or you're gonna meet somebody maybe throughout November but again, it's really timeless. I don't like to, you know, totally get uh, stuck on timestamps of when the ink blot is for. But to acknowledge it was inspired by the month of November, as that in itself may have meaning to somebody. Uh, this is like a scarf. Interesting. This scarf also makes me feel like it's a sword so in some respects it's this scarf and you know very soothing very soft like a ribbon and then all of a sudden this scarf can whoosh, and it becomes a sword and something about the eye brows or the brow itself the brow itself uh, 
Uh, this looks like little figurines that are like coming out. I'm going to ask to grab the crystal ball here. Contemplation ball. Figurines that like sit on a shelf. I don't know if somebody has uh, like power. What are those called? Uh, Oh my goodness, it's completely fleeting me in the English language. Like you empower something. I don't know why it's like a power figurine, a power ranger, but it's not necessarily a power ranger, but that symbol could mean to somebody. You imbued items with power. Okay, and then somebody might just have it sitting in their home, like on a shelf or in a corner, but it's doing something. Placed particularly, and it's a power object. Oh my goodness. That was a journey to get to the word object. Interesting. Hmm. Always an adventure, and I'm grateful for the space to explore. Um, I think it's a bowl that ha maybe it's a particular uh, a cow i'm not sure but it's something and it has a nose ring i think for some reason it's a bull and then like that's how they would uh, pull them through the farm fields i could be wrong but it's just how it's coming through as i saw the bull nose ring and something about the nostrils uh there's still something or you always have a part, a power place within you. And I'm seeing just like that scarf, because I was seeing it as red. If somebody uh, eggs you on with this red scarfy thing, and now I can suddenly hear like the hooves in your whoosh and you're gonna go charging, you're gonna go charging for them. And that person who might be, you know, doing the red scarfy thing is like, I'm over here, I'm over here. Oh, I don't, I think you took the scarf away from people, places and things because you, hand, you might have at some point in time handed them the very scarf that would drive you nutty like a sword. And you're like, no. And I can even hear like the snout noise coming out. Like, <sighs> you know what I mean? Could be also Taurian energy. Maybe you draw in. You're very good at drawing in Taurus energy. You work well with the Taurian energy being another, you know, earth sign. Um, something about the hooves as well. The hooves, the way that is, that is walked. Hmm. Okay, Aries. I'm being asked to come on over here for a moment. If you'd like to join me. Oh, see this castle? No, it's not even a castle. My apologies. Okay, so I'm seeing a person and a person. And say, for simplicity's sake, I'm going to say it's like an art easel. And there's things happening. But I'm not actually seeing it as an art easel. I'm seeing it like a weaving. What is that called? There's actually another word for it. Give me one moment here. All right, Arians, my apologies. I didn't realize I wasn't plugged in, so I was going to lose you. Okay. So they, I don't know what it's called. There's like a bunch of wool. And it's this contraption that, you know, you put the strings of the wool in and then, oh, what, oh, darn it. But it's like blankets or something. Blankets, shawls, um, uh, textiles. Thank you. Textiles are being woven. Maybe this is symbolic for somebody, like taking strings of different things, different colors, and making something out of it that is very nurturing and warm. Or maybe this, what I can't remember the word of what this is called, 
feel free to note it in the comments below if you do. Maybe this could be of something of interest for you to create. There's something tangible about, tangible about it that is very tantalizing. It's, it's meditative, um, highly meditative in nature. And something about keeping the hands busy, keeping the hands busy. I'm seeing a person, like a head, actually has a, a little lion's head. And I just say little because it's physically little to me, a lion's head. But there's an arm behind it. Like it's like, yeah. Uh, and they're riding some other creature. I'm going to say it's a mystical creature. Mystical creature. And they are feeling free. Feeling so free. It's also very youthful. Look at all that pink. I'm loving it. Uh, something in the clouds. So it's definitely, definitely in that mystical realm like it's feeling for me. Whatever this weaving is has come from a lot of creative ways to ground. And not only maybe the earthly experience, but I'm actually seeing like uh, like medicine grinding into things into a powder and down here there's two eyes and some hair and um, I am seeing it as a female or female energy so it just could be like a point in time of the sacral energy I don't know again I don't know if that's from seven to nine or when it was being born but it became very healed or is still in the midst of healing but nonetheless it is there and it is this massive foundation for this flower to feel free to bloom and breathe really is how it's feeling and all the thorns that one may uh, put in for a protective measure or grow uh, it actually helps maintain a particular balance because of what's being woven in the center all right, I'm going to flip it to one of your Arians and see what else is going on from a different perspective. All right. And I'm being asked, still asked to come back over here if you don't mind. So in it to win it. If anything stands out. Um, okay. There is a... Okay, what what is that? What is that? What is that? Uh, punk rock hair. Punk rock hair. You see it up there like a mohawk. Thank you. Uh, some sort of hairstyle or a mohawk. Maybe it's in, in regards to adolescent times or something in regards to having your hair in a way that you love because it represents and helps you to remember feeling like a rock star. You know what I'm saying? Like, and not the rock star in the stereotypical, like, oh, fame and fortune. I mean, like your energy is like, yes, I'm on fire, right? I'm on fire. Hmm. It's funny how like if I was to typically see somebody with punk and somebody might automatically in response go, oh, they're a troublemaker. Oh, they're this, that or the other. And aside from what I, you know, just from movies, this side or the other. I'm in the movie Hackers. Okay. So it's brought me to the movie Hackers. And I... Probably for all like the punk rocky kind of stuff or very techno oriented. Uh, Mohawk may even mean something to you specifically, symbolically. Hmm. This, this bridge, it makes me feel like a bridge where each strand um, is a communication of sorts. That's why it's standing up. In this bridge in this brush to kind of cleanse the space between uh, communication so it's clear and when I come into the hackers movie I honestly I can't fully remember what the movie was about 
Uh, but I'm seeing all the action around it. And it's very colorful. They're wearing fun clothes. Like there's zippers. I don't know. There's rollerblades. There's fast music. The soundtrack is amazing, especially if you're a prodigy lover. Like punk rock. And usually for me, there's some sort of message in there that is really, really positive. But if you can't get past the punk, if you can't get past the rock, if you can't get past the hair, if you can't get past the mohawk, um, it's, it, you're not going to reap the rewards, the positive message, the very positive message. And no longer being hacked. It's like something about the Aryan energy is, is um, ensuring. Sorry, there's no more being hacked. Because now I'm seeing this as um, strings and to this puppet. Okay, so I completely realize, and if you're familiar with me, that I will jump all over the place. Wherever the story goes, I flow. Nonsense completely is uh, perfectly fine. I'm not here to make sense of it. I'm just here to explore it. So what was perhaps one time feeling like a puppet on a string, Arians, or you can see this in other uh, aspects of reality, in other fusions, what a weird word to say, but fusions, hmm, fusions of frequencies, and you can see this at play in some ways, punk rock, you're like, no, I'm not no in a rebellious way, again, that's, I forgive me, it's not supposed to be rebellious that's not the point it's missed but something about the hackers movie um i believe it's like something about a skateboard i don't know maybe just even like reading up on it the the point of the story may inspire something to resonate and that brings kind of brings me up here uh there's another creature oh it's, this is, okay, some sort of um, fork, mm. do you know those, I don't know what they're for, but they're maybe for farming, or picking up hay or, or something along that lines, like but one fork is long and the other two are shorter. This is very ornate. Um, there's also, I think it's been given to you, if I'm being very, very honest, because of the work that's been done in the grounding. And there is also, do you see the space up here? I'm seeing a feather and some tribal, tribal feather. Sorry if I'm shaking the cam. And I am seeing uh, an indigenous elder. Long, long braid. Long, long braid, look at that. Uh, they are either smoking a pipe or playing a flute. Yep, that's absolutely, you can see on the other side as well. Hmm. Look at that illumination too at the end of the braid because I've already jumbled over here. Long braid, there is like a wee, oops, I'm not even in the camera here. I don't know if you can see, there's a white in there, like a little rosebud. Okay, Arians, I'm jumping over here before we start adding on some tarot and oracle. Thank you. And I'm actually going for the obsidian this time. Anything that stands out? Um, I'm seeing a bird bath. And there's frogs or turtles in it. Frogs or turtles. I kind of can go either way, to be honest with you. But it's like one of those ornate ones, like if this was the base and this was the top for the birds and there might be a little fountain or something a little decorative up there. 
Oh, and it's adorable. So now what I'm seeing is it as an ice rink. And even when it's cold out, um, the different creatures, frogs, turtles, maybe something else, they ice skate. So it's uh, the change of seasons, uh, water transforming from, you know, liquid to ice is opportunity. You're like, yeah, that's okay. Yeah, I complete, I can hear like this little conversation. I might prefer warm lake water or cool lake water or swimming in liquefied water. Yes, it's so therapeutic. You know, I might prefer that. But when the season changes and it's cold and ice, uh, there's a great opportunity to to utilize different tools for water, to carve things out, uh, to make different paths, to have fun. That whole freeing, like flying thing before, I think it was maybe here. It's like, well, now I just, I can feel free on my feet. Feel free on my feet. Feel free on my feet. Hmm, what a beautiful feeling. Uh, there's two little handles here. So I feel like you can pick up this perspective and apply it to other elements in your life, fire, water, earth, etc. Yeah, and uh, I immediately was just flipped back to when it was bull. So it's like when you want to work with earth energy, when you want to work with fire energy, when you want to work with um, uh, wood, when you want to work with air, water, you it's like that weavy thing. Darn, I wish I could remember what that thing is called. None, the, nonetheless, that's what it feels like. You have the ability to create something from it, to weave uh, a wonder. All right, Arians, I'm going to get ready to add on some tarot and oracle. I'm going to switch the view back, so give me two shakes of a lamb's tail. Okay. Let's start adding on some Terra and Oracle to support this Aryan energy as I continue to gaze to gain. Thank you for being with me as I am exploring this way of offering. But to be honest with you, changing the camera angles is a lot, so I might just, we'll see, we'll see. Uh, two things are standing out as I'm shuffling the cards, watching kind of the story unfold like one of those flip books if you were to draw I don't know if everyone did it when they were kids but draw little stick figures on like the bottom of each page and then you would go and you would see see it make moves that's how it's coming through there's a fire of creation happening in and around you this also makes me feel like that that bull ring so there might even be like a piece of jewelry that's also stepping forward that's going to be come symbolic Another power object of sorts. Did we talk about the power object? Was that here? Yes, it was here, that power object. It's still nice to have questions, Arians. I don't know if um, that needs to be remembered or maybe just re-inspired to say, it's okay not to know everything to its, to its fullest extent, like you've cracked the cookie. You've read the fortune, but did you go back and eat the cookie and actually enjoy the cookie? Like that's how it's kind of making me feel. Like go back and enjoy the cookie. Or like, did you just toss the fortune away? You know what I mean? Like you, oh, you got the words and okay, I'm good. <laughs> so, but it feels very like a fire fortune cookie, you know? Um, I don't know how else to say that. Feels like there's something about wanting a particular amount of certainty but the fortune cookie is just kind of trying to remind me to say, you know, have a little bit of fun too. And every question, if every question was answered, uh, there might be peace for a, a moment, but then, you know, explore. There'd be nothing left to explore. And I was going to say it earlier as I saw it come through, but I trusted it would, the wheel of fortune. So there's that, a lot of that earth energy is coming into uh, with the Wheel of Fortune. 
That's what those figures feel like, if I may. When we were talking about the punk rock, see if I can line this up without making a complete. See these creatures? That's what I see there, just with punk rock hair. Notably, the punk rock hair is white, so it's of light. Again, the non-rebellion kind of thing. Something about the compass leading. Hmm. Arians, can you feel that? Seeker and seeking. X marks the spot. That nature weaving of those textiles. There's a particular path, uh, Arians, that while you're here on this earth, you are, I, I, I'll say it, I feel like you're looking for the answer to a particular question. And then it brings me to the fortune cookie and says, okay, but maybe sometimes the answer wasn't just in cracking the fortune cookie, it was eating the, it was actually eating the cookie and enjoying the sweetness life has to offer. Or uh, maybe going back and reading a little message from a different uh, vant vantage point. But whatever you're doing in regards to navigating this map of the Wheel of Fortune, maybe you're working on karmic cycles, uh, family karma, like maybe you're, you're going big, right? Like thinking of that big scope of past lifetimes, but you're working your way through it while you're here and now. And you will, what I'm feeling is you will reap the rewards of that. Uh, try not to get in your own way and be your own bull, right? Um, watch for anyone, you know, dangling the red scarf or the red in front of you to get you distracted. And notably, if something does distract you, if you start to see red because something irritates you or triggers you, suddenly I'm saying it could be a fortune cookie in disguise to, to, to notice that and go, ooh, I, I kind of want to crack this open a little bit more and see what else could come through uh, because this might actually be a treasure uh, in whatever it is you're pursuing. Which for the Arians, I feel like there's always a big, uh, big scope of pursuing. Robin, the new spring is upon you. Uh, something about the, the breast chest color is coming through and spring may be the season where on the bottom we have here, pelican. Unselfishness will renew you for one reason or another that felt important to come through. So Arians, new spring is upon you. The Robin may just really I'm seeing the worm uh, like with the robin as a fortune cookie to enjoy the whole thing but nonetheless okay Arians thank you so much for joining me I hope this has served well thank you for your awareness and your attention and I hope that the empathic exploration um, inspires until next time thank you